Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a Shared Universe Podcast Studio. My name is Ming Chen. We are actually in the midst of uh, the Super Jersey Comic Expo, and uh, I got my man here, Anthony Snyder from Anthony's Comic Book Art. Yes. Here, all the way from North Jersey. And uh, you're like, hey, let's do something. I'm coming yeah, down. Let's do something. Let's talk about Let's talk about business. Let's talk business. Yeah, yeah. Meaning comic business, not monkey business. Yeah. The business of comic books. The business of comic books. Right. Of which you know much about. Well, I, um, as a, a guy that's been in the business for 30 years now. The premier comic, original comic art dealer in the world, in my I opinion. have the largest uh, art website by volume. Okay. I mean, so there's a couple guys that have like, they only have just uh, really valuable stuff. But I've, along the way, I've tried to cater towards... Uh, the budget collector, the everyday uh, collector. You know, I, I was willing to carry stuff, you know, for back when there were $20 pages, I was willing to carry $20 pages. Now I'm willing to carry $50, $100 things. And uh, I've done deals like with uh, 10,000 color guides and uh, from a colorist. You know, I was just talking to Bob Sharon out there, a colorist. And, uh, hey, do you got any uh, color guides from actual comic books? And he goes, oh, no, I haven't had those since the late 90s. And that's when that whole, you know, coloring digital changeover happened. Yes. And, and for me as a photographer back in that day, that's when it happened for me, too. I was a film guy that I did film jobs for the ad agencies. But then when it became a digital situation, everything transitioned to digital. Yeah. And, and uh, that was that early 2000s, too. Yeah, and that website you speak of, Anthony's Comic Book Art dot com. Yeah, correct. Uh, let's oh put that up God. on the screen right there. Anthony's Comic Book Art dot com. Look at oh, that. We got that right up look there. Look at those graphics. Yeah, ch- you got to check that out for sure. So you know we've known each other a long time, and we and I always well, talk ten to years you. now. And uh, you are Comic Book Man alumni, as seen on TV. Uh, yeah, you were on as twice. Seen, is that correct? Two and a half times, really. What's the half? Well, when when they did that, uh, I they wanted me to come in and buy all that stuff, all the Esposito stuff on. At the Bodner's auction. Yeah, we did an auction where uh, we, and, for the Mike Esposito yeah, collection. And, and, and at that moment, this agent had basically uh, had signed with an agent, and she was trying to sell me for my own reality okay, show. Okay, so you couldn't be... So she's they, like, oh, no, you, you don't want to be on... Uh, the, the, yeah, you don't want to be on that. You don't want to be on comic book, man. They could, they'll ruin your career, man. They're, yeah. ba- they're bad for your image, maybe? Yeah, and uh, ne- needless to say, that nah. didn't work out with that agent. Yeah. Uh, so I have a different uh, producer trying to sell me right now as yeah. a, a transactional reality show because yeah. it's... Uh, it's I think it's uh, a... Um, a genre that is underserved. I agree. You know, they 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 have these long running joggernauts that is Pawn Stars and that that is uh, sure. you know, you know Antiques Roadshow. And, uh, you know, or no, that's let, not transactional. That's appraisal. You know, so that's different. You know, oh, okay, the Mike let, Wolf. You know, the the the, the guys that wander around and buy the same stuff every day. Uh, hardcore Pawn. You watched that one. I they, did from Detroit. Yeah, yeah, the one they just yell at each other. That was not attractive. <laughs> that wasn't an, an attra- you know you talk about a shared universe. It's like yeah. that was that wasn't a universe I wanted to share. It was entertaining. Uh, well, I, yeah. if you like that kind of uh, you know uh, uh, you know bend your neck uh, neck benders. Sure, they got into a lot of fights. Rubber necking card trash. Uh, <laughs> they yelled a lot. Card trash. Uh, they card, yelled a lot. Card trash. Car tra- car, tra- car wreck. Car wreck. wreck. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, the guys that wander around and buy signs and p- parts of engines and, yeah. you know, come on, come on, people are more interested in the pop culture. Yeah, well, I agree. You know, and uh, Pawn Stars will do these, you know, they actually had to get out of the, out of the store or their, their set that they call a store. They're, there's the store and then they have a set that's right. like a store, I, I think, because they're never actually in there. Nope. Because I've gone in there to try to talk to him about uh, selling him some of my dad's stuff. Yeah. You know, the Jimmy the Greek stuff, because mm-hmm. he says he... Yep, uh, your dad, is, Jimmy the Greek. ...is uh, about vintage Las Vegas stuff. And my dad was Mr. Las Vegas from the 50s through the 70s. Yeah. So that was, you know, something I wanted to talk to him about. But I actually did give stuff, some stuff to Heritage, and they did sell uh, some stuff. Uh, what did well was the... Uh, the 
football jerseys and basketball jerseys sure. that I had as mementos uh, from when I was a kid. Yeah, did like, you keep any of the sports memorabilia? Because I'm I'm into that as well. No, nah, I, I, I sold that uh, during the lockdown. I, I figured I needed some more revenue, and yeah. I, and uh, it generated some revenue for me at the time where where I thought I was getting hurt by not doing the shows. Sure. You know, so I, I missed two San Diego's and, yep. you know, one New York, sh- one. Uh, yeah. A lot of shows. actually. Yeah, one C2E2. The- no, actually, that one happened. But. And when, um, you know, when I do six figures in a San Diego or do six figures in a New York and that you just take that out of the equation sure. that, you know, the, the bottom, it affects the bottom line. Now we're doing shows in um, if you want to talk about the business. I do. Uh, yeah, we're doing shows in a downward trending market and a downward trending economy which is a double double whammy. Uh, so, but these show promoters, you know, San Diego Comic-Con, they still want their, you know, I have five booths there, and I, I pay 15000 for those booths just to walk in the door. Yeah. You know, I, I had four booths in New York, and uh, that was $10,000 just to walk in the door. Right. You know, they still want to get paid. They're, they think they're still providing us uh, this service. Uh, to let a bunch of cosplayers walk around and not spend money. <laughs> but you do. I mean, we just got back from New York Comic Con two weeks ago. Uh, how did it go? How's it trending? Well, like I said, it was definitely not as strong as others have been. Uh, the big the big buyers, um, they kind of take care of themselves uh, with the auctions and stuff like that. And that's why the auctions are still just pumping them out. They think, you know... it. it for me, it's a it's a it's an issue that I've tried to take issue with, with some of the auction houses. It's like that I talk to that I'm that I'm conversational with. It's like you know you used to do one every season. Now you do one every two weeks, and the other place is doing one every two weeks, and then the other place is doing it every so two too much. Weeks. So there's one Saturated. going off every week, right? And with every sale of like you know uh, say my favorite comic book ever, uh, Giant Size X Men One. You know, it's not going up, it's going down. Right. You know, it's like, so they're actually, the down, they're putting pressure on a downward market uh, by supply. Right. You know, I did take some economics classes in college. Okay. You know, so, so you got some supply macro. Supply, demand, ec- okay. You got some macroeconomics okay. going supply on Supply side here. economics, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. Yeah, it's supply side economics. Yeah. It's like when, the you know, uh, I mean, I can go back 30 years to, like, 1994, you know, a G.I. Joe, 30th anniversary of G.I. Joe. And then uh, you, you'd go to that a G.I. Joe show, and uh, a painted-headed naked figure was $100. Yeah. Now, that's probably $200 today. Right. Now, you can get them online for $30. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of eBay and the perception is they're not as rare as you think. You know, you can buy them every day. And when you can buy something every day instead of once a month or once a season, you know, the perception of uh, availability and the rarity is dissolved. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, um, you know, there's no more. <coughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's a, that's actually what New York did for me, too, is gave me a, the worst sinus infection <laughs> I've ever had. Well, that hey, bacterial infection in my face. Excuse me. That I was so I was in such pain in my face. Right. My face hurt so bad. I went to the dentist because I thought I had a cracked tooth or something. And uh, there was didn't, a diagnosis. I had a sinus infection. Oh, sinus infection. OK. Yeah. They didn't find anything. They didn't find a cracked tooth. Right. I went to the doctor uh, the next day and he put me on penicillin. So yeah. I was I'm just getting over that from New York Comic Con. So, you know, uh, not having mask mandates in, in these, you know, crowds and them letting everybody in again. Mm, yeah I, well i mean i don't think we're going back to masks anytime soon yeah, so well yeah and you know yeah. as i saw new york was pretty crowded i felt it was very crowded yeah. that's what i'm talking about but were people spending you say no well um, and you you know firsthand well for my because I, I know i spend for, <laughs> i know i spend but okay, i bought well, what'd you buy you bought uh, pops uh, uh, I, you I, bought, your, I bought i bought funko pops i bought a lightsaber I bought a Hasbro Force Effects dark saber that I okay, but the lightsabers they're getting better all the time. Sure. They're getting cooler all the time. Was, so yeah. if you get the latest in technology of lightsabers, that you can actually have a light up and whack, you know, you know, have a fight with it. Yeah. You know, it, it's not going to break. 
you know, like 10 years ago, they weren't that sturdy. You know, now it's like you can actually, they're, they're cool. Because my oldest son's into Star Wars, so I look at that stuff for him. Yeah, I bought a few prints. I uh, got an autograph from John Carpenter on a They Live poster. So, yeah, this is, you know, oh, pretty cool nice. stuff. Um, but you like horror movies? Uh, I like John Carpenter horror movies. Okay. Yeah, not all horror movies. Yeah, my, my producer that was there at the show went to go talk to him. He actually knows him. The, matri- the producer that's trying to sell my reality show. Um, so, well, yeah, he likes John Carpenter as well. Yeah. Um, but, uh, well, somebody we both know had a huge original art auction, which you consulted on. Uh, Kevin Smith sold mm-hmm. most of his original art collection. Mm-hmm. And he had, a, he had a pretty good collection. I, I mean, he's got so much stuff I don't even remember. I know he had one Frank Miller Daredevil yeah, page. Yeah, the Frank Miller Daredevil page and, I actually made an offer on. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that, it was so funny. That that page was in my office for years. It I think I'd found it sitting in a hallway. Yeah, it was in a hallway. And, and I, when Mike called me into yeah. it, uh, he, he called me and said, hey, Kevin would like you to help yeah. uh, uh, do estimates on the art that we have here. And I'm like, you know, there's there's this there's this frame hanging up in a hall a dark yeah, hallway. That, yeah. And I'm like, Mike, that's I would pay you fifty thousand dollars for this page right now. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah, I paid Kevin. Bullseye and, and on it, was it, just it like, Daredevil. It was yeah, it was, it was a, a bullseye uh, Dave, uh, Daredevil bullseye action page. Yeah. I think what did it go for sixty five? I think something like that. Yeah. 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 And uh, I know he had a lot of uh, original. I, th- I think the the Green Arrow covers. Well, yeah, that he wrote. Yep, yep, that he, he wrote. wrote those issues. Yep. So you so know, got... I wrote those up uh, as, uh, you know, Kevin Smith, uh, uh, you know, original author to, and this is the the covers, the painted covers by. Um, is it Matt Wagner? Matt Wagner, yeah. yes, Matt Wagner. Yep. Yeah. So I thought those. I don't know how those did. I thought those should be worth between five and ten thousand each. Yep. Easily, uh, because Kevin Smith wrote them, and they they were owned by him. And yeah. you know, here's uh, the COA saying this is from my collection. Right. It touched his air. He breathed well, on them. His aura was within those that artwork. That that means a little bit something, well, right? I mean, you know, he's a famous filmmaker, yeah. and uh, whether you're a fan or not, I mean, he's uh, very associated with the comic, uh, the comic book business, and he he wrote and uh, and produced comics. And uh, had the comic book store. I mean, what was the first thing he did when he made some money with uh, Clark's? Bought a comic book shop. He opened a comic book store. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's cool. I mean, as a as a guy who has the love in his heart, you know, that did other things. I, I was a, a, a photographer and, and a producer uh, for uh, advertising in New York. Um, with all the big agencies, did big campaigns, but uh, I was doing this as a side hustle. And then when 9-11 happened, it kind of ruined the business. So um, I, uh, I just put more and more time into this as I could make this grow. Right. And I couldn't help the advertising industry as a whole. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's well, like... Not one man. You're just one yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, I was powerless with that, you know. And, and you know, I was a, an assignment advertising guy, so either I was working that month and making 50 grand on a on Paxil or some other kind of uh, pharmaceutical or job or cigarette job. I worked on, you know, I worked on tobacco for three years, and uh, that paid the bills. Uh, or I wasn't. And when I wasn't working, it was hard on me because I'm not good at doing nothing. Right. I, I only have I ever am seen one you. of those people. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I, never seen you sit there and do nothing. No, so. I, I want to work. I want to work every day. I work seven days a week. If yeah. I'm not doing something, uh, I'm not easy to live with. I mean, my wife would be like, uh, <laughs> you should go to work for a few hours and come back, you know, just yeah, to get clear some your head. stuff done. Yeah. Right. No, just to calm down on a daily basis. I have a drive in me that, that and that's how I've built. My, my comic book and art business over the past, well, let's say after 9-11. So, you know, in the past 20 years mm-hmm. of really trying to build it into a national brand. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, with uh, like with this show, this is a uh, yeah. What is this you're holding exclusive. here? Well, the Dueling Dealers of Comic Book Art. That's a streaming show we do every Wednesday. Okay, check that we, out. Yeah, where we... Uh, uh, structure it like a prize fight. It's it's between me and uh, the other comic art seller that has inventory. There's only two of us that could have done 140 shows, 
you know, and we've done 140 shows now. This was a 100th anniversary episode, but we've done 100 shows, uh, you know, where we uh, debut. I like to call them, you know, curated de- debuts. Debut. <laughs> yeah, we debut them. Debut. Uh, curated debuts of uh, original art that has come into our business. Uh, like um, the past couple of weeks, we've been dealing with a lot of stuff that we picked up at New York Comic Con. And that's new to our business. And then we offer them on the show. And uh, the viewers that we get, and we get up to 300 viewers. Yes. We get up to 300 right. live viewers yes. on that's a claim amazing. show. Yes. Now you're in this business. That's a lot. You know that's, that's not easy. It's a lot. I it's mean, good. usually, I mean, successful people are getting like 60, 70 people, you know, it's sure. like that, that are having buyers. Uh, but these are, uh, we do, we do funny memes and we pre-record stuff that, uh, the, uh, Bill Cox, the owner of the comic art fans, he produces and it's, uh, we try to be entertaining as well and funny. So it's, uh, it's entertainment and we hope you spend some money. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you like the stuff that we're offering. Yeah, check it out live every Wednesday. What time? Nine o'clock Eastern on Bill Cox's Comic Art Live YouTube channel. Okay, Bill Cox's Comic Book Art Live. No, Bill Cox's Comic Art Live YouTube channel. Okay, Comic Art Live. Comic Art Live. So uh, Bill has a big uh, uh, virtual con coming up. Uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, okay. like the uh, 10th and 11th. And I usually do a Sunday opening show where I'll do an hour uh, um, on Sunday to open uh, the show. Yeah. Uh, and then he'll do panels, you know, like he'll have A-list artists. Like I know he's had Adam Hughes and other artists like that. I don't know if he has the, all the panels uh, organized yet, but uh, I'll do a, an hour-long panel on uh, where from my warehouse and uh people can tune in and i'll offer new stuff and then uh if you have an offer to make on something existing on the website i entertain offers and we usually do some business and have some fun and uh my friend chris pomerini who's a professional musician will come in and do a song with sharon oh cool I did your, a couple yeah your songs. wife sharon your wife yeah but sharon can actually sing Sharon, Sharon, this is Sharon right here flying in with the cake. Yes, she's just cupcakes step- on her head. Yeah, she's. Uh, where she- where do we get this? Can we get? Is this available? This this book? This book? Yeah, yeah. I have them. You have. I them. give them away with orders. So if you order something on Anthony'sComicBookArt.com, and it's over a hundred dollars, we send you one. I'll okay. send you a, a signed one. Amazing. And yeah. uh, how how important is social media? to what you do now I, I know you've embraced it full-heartedly yeah I, um, I don't know if you resisted at first or you had to figure it out but you've mm, you've I uh, always see I'm an advertising guy good that point. was my career yes so as far as anything and then my dad was a PR guy yes so about promotions and advertising and and getting uh getting the word out there I've always had that uh in, in my in the uh, forefront of my mind so uh, as far as uh, getting the word out there of uh, new material or uh, uh, in, um, uh, you know, garnering uh, followers yep. and stuff like that, uh, I'm, I'm all about that. I really love Instagram. Instagram's I, great. I, I, that's the one that I've uh, most uh, kind of fell in sync with and, and able to do something on a daily basis yep. on. And then I have that hooked up. That's Anthony's comic book art on Instagram. Yes. And um, I only, uh, you know, I don't do any of those things where, oh, you want 10,000 followers? We'll get you 10,000 followers. I don't have any. There's no fake followers. You know, I have like 3,000 people that follow me on Instagram, but they're all customers. And that's the way I want to keep it. You know, it's like it's very organic. You have to follow me. I'm not going to I'm not going to follow 15,000 people. So you and, and then say, follow me back. I don't follow anybody, yeah. hardly at all. Yeah, you're very active on there, uh, posting clips. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and a uh, lot of stuff. new material, um, uh, previews for doing dealers. Uh, I did like uh, with Scott Hanna just now. I did a little snippet. We did four or five minutes uh, at New York Comic Con. I I talked to Chris Claremont yep. for ten minutes. I talked to Al Milgram for ten minutes. Uh, who else? Uh, a few other guys like that. Uh, well, there aren't there aren't guys like that as far as Chris Claremont's concerned. No, he's one of a kind. <laughs> That's the guy who changed comics uh, forever and uh, for us. Yeah. Uh, 
But uh, I like to post some content about uh, creators like that, and um, uh, and I enjoy it. I, I enjoy doing that. And uh, if you know, some people say no, and that's fine. You don't want to be on, but and then if I convince you, they don't regret it. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's all about just promoting what they're doing at the time, and uh, letting them talk. Yeah. So, what do you have lined up for twenty twenty four? Is uh, are you doing more shows? Or are you doing the same amount? Um, you know, the shows are back. If uh, we're you know, if we're, they're talking about you know the state of the comic cons. I I think I'm about to hit thirty this year, which is a lot, even for me. Well, that's that's awesome. But you're so. you're you're getting picked up, you know, to go to these cons. Yeah, you a have couple, to well, buy a booth well, and, no, and hustle. No, a couple shows actually do uh, comp me in because they want my kind of merchandise okay. at their show that I. I I, uh, I take care of a whole category for sure. them, you know, that I, I have a great range of material and a great range of prices that can appeal to uh, all kinds of budgets. Yeah. You know, I do have six figure pieces, but I also have $20 things. Right. You know, so. Uh, yeah, I got one right in the middle. I'm a uh, proud owner of a uh, Walking Dead page from, I think, issue 79, page 19. I hooked you up with that, You right? did, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're piece. welcome. I just, I really wanted a piece. Did of, I give it with, to you? Well, I, I earned it. I may, I helped you set up a podcast. Oh, do I owe thing. you another page for this? Uh, <laughs> no, no. I love, I'm very proud of that page. I really wanted a page with Glenn on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It had Glenn Glenn's on it. Yeah. One of my favorite characters in comics. And um, yeah. Oh, a, you read? The, did you read the comic? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the way through? Uh, not all the way through. I never actually. When he got killed in issue 100. Oh, that I was I stopped 100? reading for a while. Yeah, because I just, I didn't agree with the decision. To kill him off. Oh well, I, and uh, and I, later on, I wholeheartedly I, agree with yeah, you I, as I, far I, as I thought I, it was a heart and soul of the comic, and uh, you know later on Robert Kirkman did confirm like, yeah, you know maybe we shouldn't have killed him. Then why didn't he learn that lesson with the TV show? Because it, oh. I mean they lost a third of their audience after that that oh, episode. And they, and they they killed two beloved characters. So, yeah, they yeah. lost all the rednecks and all the Asian guys. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's so, like what? Yeah, yeah. and uh, that was the last episode that I watched. Uh, you know, live. Like when it aired? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, 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 habitually or sure. whatever. I was following the yeah. show. I felt like it was my duty as a professional to know what was going on in this property. And I was constantly uh, w uh, looking for stuff for Kirkman because I had his want list. And I would sell him art uh, based on his want list. Um, and it, when I, I remember my whole family sitting there watching – uh, Negan pound out uh, Glenn's head, and uh, that was it. Yeah, we never watched another episode. Yeah, it was ever. Hard, it was hard to watch. Now, how if you're if you're a student of this uh, property, how is it that Maggie and Negan are together? I didn't make it that far, so I have no idea. Well, they're on a show together. Yeah, right? they are. Yes, yeah, Land yeah. of the Dead or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I have. They come to New York, don't they? they? Come to New York, yes. And Daryl's in Paris. Somehow. And Daryl, yeah, how did Daryl get? I the don't know. They don't. I, from what I understand, they don't really explain. He it. sprouted just, wings off his uh, his, uh, his Harley vest. jacket, yes. And, yes. and he went to Paris. And yes. he flew to Paris. Yeah, and now it's been revealed that Carol's going to join him out there for season two. Oh, so, Carol. Yeah. All right. Well. Yeah, Carol. Cool. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, she was a good character. She was solid. Uh, yeah, but I, I am a proud owner of uh, original art piece uh, with Glenn. With Glenn, yeah. yeah, yeah. Before he got his brains bashed in by. Uh, Negan. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, you, you've got quite a few Walking Dead pieces still. Sure. Okay, yeah. Cool. I, I mean, you know, the, the, the franchise is kind of uh, uh, dwindling, I would say, uh, as far as uh, fan following and uh, interest in the material. Yeah. And but, um, with everything kind of moving digital, not every, not 100 percent, but there are a lot of people drawing digitally. So you don't really get that pencil and paper mm -hmm. anymore or. Yeah, I've met some artists who start on pencil and paper, but then they scan it in and they, they finish it off digitally. Yeah, uh, um, does different, that... different artists have their different process, yeah. and you kind of have to roll with it uh, in this day and age. Right. Uh, if somebody's going to... Um, but I, I had to deal with this 15 years ago because I was repping Alex Malev. And Alex Malev was the first guy that actually adopted the digital uh, format yeah. into comics with his run with uh, Bendis on Daredevil. And now I, w I was begging him, oh, please, Alex, uh, do, the, do the covers at least in yes. art. Yeah. Because I could sell the covers at yeah. the time, three, uh, you know, 15 years ago for three, four, five thousand. Yeah. Which was good money. Oh, yeah. You know, that's still like 10,000 today. Is. Right? Uh, so 
he, but he, um, you know, he was from Bulgaria. He was a classically trained artist uh, in his in his uh, state, uh, the, the National Institute of Art. Uh, but he was actually very adept in his computer, and uh, he had the, the the best computer it was like this big it was like a mac tower man and uh, the processing power he had and he would go around take pictures and then draw draw things scan them in and make his comic books that way and uh, it was a lifestyle choice for him he said he could do uh, a book in a week or so a week 10 days instead of a month so th i had no daredevil pages to sell and it kind of you know, ate at our relationship to a point where, you know, we didn't have one. So now it's like all these people are kind of catching up as the technology has become easier and easier and easier. And they can draw right in on their tablets. They yeah, can draw their page. Well, it's nice to have an, an undo button as opposed to, you know, if you're um, inking yeah, a page and you, you, know, you go off they the line They can draw it in and uh, they can ink it. You know, they can yep. do the blacks. Yep, yep. different strokes. You know, strokes. inking was always about doing the blacks. You know, the inker, like uh, having a, the most prolific uh, inker that ever lived, Scott Hanna out there, you know, he put in, he's done more pages than anybody, is putting in the blacks, so then they make uh, a stat that's just the size of comics, and then that stat can be colored in by the colorist. That was the classic way. The pencils, the inks, the shrinking uh, for the colorist, the colorist, and then that color guide would go to the printer. And uh, you can't, you can't do, you know, you have to do it this size because if you shrink color, it shifts. If you enlarge color, it shifts. Right. You know, it, it gets denser if you shrink it. It gets lighter if you enlarge it. So it had to be the, to the size of the comic book. And that's why Bob Sharon out there, you know, his color guides are going to be the same size. As the comic book, they're going to be stats of the inks that were the blacks. And the blacks had to have that edge, that those boundaries for the colorist to put the colors in. So yeah. that's, that's how the classic method is. But now with digital coloring that makes it even easier to do the coloring, uh, you know, and you could rasterize and pasteurize and, you know, do <laughs> homogenize, uh, homogenize, like. <laughs> you know, and do your blacks and just, you know, some guys just do pencils and and and, uh, uh, you know, darken them. Sure. And then and then they go to the, the colorist. Yeah. So, w so w there's all kinds of different processes. I yeah. try. I represent uh, an ink, uh, one of the best inkers in the business, Jay Lyston. And uh, I sell his ink art, his pages. Now, some of them are going to be pencils and inks, especially the ones he does with uh, one of his mainstay uh, pencilers, Greg Land. Now, their combination has become really popular in the industry. And, and uh, like, I'm, I just got a batch of uh, Wolverine versus Predator pages. And people are digging those. Sure. Because, you know, yeah, a lot claws of action. out, a lot of claws action. out, claws out. A lot of know. action. So they always do their pencils and inks on paper, just like uh, Scott Hanna does his pencils and inks with John Romita Jr. and Mark Bagley yeah. because they want that secondary income. Yes. You know, if they can get, uh, you know, $5,000 for a cover. Yeah, let's do pencil and ink. Let's do yeah. cover. Yeah, you, you can know, always if we scan can get $20,000 20, for this whole issue <laughs> yeah. or, or, yes. or more. It, it would be silly you know, not to pass that Especially for Spider-Man, you know, they want that secondary right. income. The people that make that lifestyle choice to do, oh, I'm going to do this in a week instead of actually doing the work in a, in a traditional manner, then they don't get the secondary income. That's right. that. I mean, even 15 years ago, I tried to do one-off prints, but it just, it just doesn't, it's not the yeah. same thing. So physical pencil and ink will always exist is what you're telling me. Cause that's, I would hope so, but there, there's I mean, probably a generation, uh, we're a generation away from it. Disappearing? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, now... There's a lot of, uh, because of, you know, the global appeal of comics and people that are uh, working in comics all the way to, like, India. Because, like Scott was telling me that uh, he is doing Spider-Man India, mm -hmm. right? And uh, there's the, the uh, creative team behind that is some Indian guys. I think they're Indian American, but they wanted a more Indian centric uh, Spider-Man, and uh, you know they'll they'll do their 
their uh, digital pencils and then send Scott his, uh, his the the pages to do. And then he'll the Scott because he wants to be able to sell them. He'll print them out and do them live on on a live board. Um, so then, but that's called ink art only right. or blue lines. Now, uh, a lot of collectors in the market of original art don't like blue lines. But instead of uh, this page being fifteen hundred dollars, like that splash that I bought from him, yep. it was five hundred dollars. Yes. So, so yeah. you know, it's it's more economical in that sense because the the actual created is that it right there? Yeah, you the, put oh, it up. Yeah, Let's look sure. at it. Let's yeah, take a look so at we it. We can look at it. There's some stuff I bought. This is a a Scott Hanna yep, Harley, Harley yep. of Sharon, my wife, my wife, and then this is a uh, <clears throat> it's a Larry Hama uh, yeah, Baroness. Baroness. Yes, and then here's the. Uh, Spider-Man India 5, page 20 splash that I, I picked up from Scott. And uh, I get, you know, he's in India. And uh, this, he says, is the first appearance of movie costume in Marvel. Amazing. So that's uh, that's from the second movie. Yeah. The Spider-Verse. Yes. And uh, that had uh, a thousand different Spider-Mans. And there was some breakout... Um, Breakout characters from the Spider Verse, one of which being Spider Man India and Spider Punk. People love Spider Punk. Yes. Yeah. Spider Punk was a, another good one. So, well, never mind Miles being, you know. Right. There are a lot of them out there. Uh, Miles, uh, Miles himself has been, um, you know, uh, you know, for me as a as a dealer, you know, I've had. I've had uh, stock that was just sitting there until like uh, Daredevil was like pretty dead until that Netflix series came right. out mm-hmm. and activated the collector market. Sure, right, and you know put yeah. put Daredevil back on people's radars. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. But nothing, nothing in the Marvel universe in the Marvel Cinematic Universe made more of a difference than Black Panther. Black Panther brought more people of color into collecting comics. And uh, especially characters that look like me, you know, uh, not me, but, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> African, you, yeah. uh, African-American sure. yep, or yep, African. Yep, people they can relate to. Well, yep. he was African-African. Yes. Yeah, Wakanda forever. But Wakanda forever even resonated, you know, through, um, yeah, different you know, cultures, Puerto Ricans. Different races. And, and, yes, yeah, for sure. For different races. And that was absolutely fantastic for the collector market yep. and for me and the business because that activated those people into collecting uh, you know, uh, uh, black character material, right? And yeah. uh, T'Challa, you know, yeah, T'Challa, that's great. Yeah, that, so that that made a big difference, and that nothing will ever make more of a difference than that did, right? So yeah, I appreciate that very much. Yeah, amazing, and I mean it's just cool, it's just cool stuff. Yeah, the T'Challa, Wakanda, uh, or, all that. Yeah, uh, now black... here's an uh, Indian guy. Yeah, you know, it's pretty uh, cool. East Indian guy, and uh, you know, trying to involve. And why not involve? There's a billion yeah. Indian people. Yes. Right. A billion <laughs> right. plus Indian people right. that uh, that want to see. Uh, yeah, you know, the one that looks like them or they uh, can relate yeah. to. Absolutely. I, and you know, you. Yeah. I mean, your favorite character on Walking Dead was He's Glenn. Asian. Yeah, I Come did on, relate uh, to him. You know. It, well, not only that, he did all the stuff nobody else wanted to do. Much like in my life, you know, Walt, Brian, and Mike. They, there's a bunch of stuff they won't do. It's like I got this. Yeah. I got this. You guys. Wow. Are, Stop being idiots. I'll, I'll take care of this. Yeah. I say well, that all the time. I think you're the breakout star from Comic Book Man. I, I appreciate mean. that. <laughs> but you were on there two and a half times, so. Well, what about that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I, 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 I appreciated the, uh, the opportunity and the exposure. And, yeah, of course. You know, and I well, appreciated. We, we needed an original art I expert, appreciated and raking in those, those staff poker tournaments that I – yeah, that's a whole yeah, other podcast. Yeah, I stopped podcast. getting invited after I won a couple of them. Well, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, back to the show. Do you have a lot of shows lined up? Um, I'm lining up 2024. Uh, the industry is strong, but I have a lot of open weekends. So if you have a convention out there, uh, I work cheap. <laughs> I would love to come to uh, your convention. Yeah, you um, go to everywhere. Yeah, you just were, hit me up on social I'm media. I'm in Chattanooga. Chattanooga like, was really? a great Chattanooga. show. Chattanooga. Chattanooga Comic Con was an amazing show. That's would fun. love to see you there one day. 
Uh, I've yeah. driven through there. Yeah, they'll be on their third sh- <laughs> show next year. Um, but there, are, yeah, there are many shows out there that I haven't been to that I would like to go to, and there are a lot of shows that I have been to that I liked very much that I hope to be invited back to. Yeah. So, well, my issue is is that I've been doing San Diego and uh, since ninety six, <laughs> ninety seven. Uh, that was that, that I actually yep. set up. Yep. And I remember the first one I ever did. I had a portfolio of stuff. And somebody uh, lent me uh, rent, let me rent half a table. Yeah, I had half a table, and that was my first presence. Two, I had six booths at one time, but I cut back. Yep, I remember. And I have three now in A still, and two across the uh, hall yep. in the more the art centric area right. where the artists and artist alley are. And I, I have my high end art over there, and I stay over there because uh, I had a partially ruptured Achilles tendon at that show. That was I could barely walk. Um, I couldn't get back and forth. So I have a big nut when you know with a San Diego. You know it costs a lot. I, I've touched on that. Yeah, before. but San Diego. At San Diego, New York is a, is a lot. Chicago. Yep, C two E two is a good yeah. one. Those are the ones I see you at. I and like you do a few here and there. Yeah, the local shows and smaller shows. Well, the local shows, uh, I'm I'm sort of doing less and less. Okay. I mean, there, there's a streak of like there's a show every weekend in this area. Yeah. It's like how can the how can the collector market really support it? Yeah. So you have these promoters doing these shows, but it's like you know the 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 budgets of these the local collectors is is spread pretty thin sure. too. I think. Well, there's a lot out there, my friend. There's a lot out there to collect, and well, you know you, a, there's you a only lot have of, so many dollars, so. There's yeah. a lot of choices. Um, I'm I'm I do I do very well with my my streaming shows, and my actual the reach of my my website that's been up since 1998. So I've had an original art website up. I have the one of the largest eBay businesses in the country. Yep, check that's that out. That's what you know. People may not understand about about my business is that I have a 10,000 square foot warehouse with 10 people working there every day. Just to support my eBay store. Yep. Yeah. Check we check that out. You got almost, a lot of cool stuff up there. Yeah. Uh, One hundred and fifty thousand plus listings. Right. And we, you know, sell a hundred, two hundred, three hundred things a day. So that's Anthony's Comic Book Art Dash Online is my eBay store. So uh, one hundred and fifty thousand plus listings, comic books, collectibles, magazines, books. Uh, you know, anything that comes in, toys, a lot of toys. Uh, and then I have a small store in my hometown in Leonia, New Jersey, that I opened for my kids to work in, but they don't even work there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely check that out. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. You got a lot of 100% f- positive feedback. Look at that. Yeah, that's 210,000 items sold. Yeah. That's a lot. And with, uh, what is that's it, 88,000 right now? Something. Oh, that you have online, positive. right? No, oh. the positives. I. I mean, uh, this is ten. Th- oh, t- ten thousand last twelve months. No, that's in the, the last twelve year. months. Yeah, we're, I don't we're, know how to change it to to uh, lifetime. All together, but. I think it's like eighty-eight, ninety thousand in that range. Oh no, eighty-four thousand six hundred sixty-one. Oh, eighty-four thousand. That's crazy. You would think yeah. after all that you would have like one or two, but no, none. No negative reviews. Uh, any any negative I would I would get uh, on eBay is somebody just trying to take advantage. Sure, they're just like, oh, this you know, we'll send out a nine two comic book, and they're like, oh, this wasn't a nine two. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm good. And now you know, ding us. Yeah. But um, my my percentages is such that uh, I have to have, you know, it, for it to affect my percentage, I don't know how many sure, sure. negatives I. But I have a customer service uh, manager mm-hmm. whose whole job is to fix, uh, right. you fix. know, any issues yep. he has with uh, with customers. Because yep. I believe, I, you know, one of the things that uh, separates me from the rest of the, the dealer types, I, when I left school, I'm Greek and Italian. That's my DNA, right? So what did I want to do? Open a restaurant. Yes. <laughs> Food. You know, it's part of your culture, too. You know, sure. You, you have Asians a ton, open a lot of restaurants. A yes. ton of Asian restaurants and uh, the Greek diner. And uh, my dad always, we always went to the best restaurants. I always had an affinity for uh, uh, fine food. So I apprenticed as a chef. And I then opened one, two, three, f- four, five. I, I was part of five different openings, and I was going to have my own restaurant as well, uh, backed by this uh, 
a billion dollar hedge fund guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was going to build a building and give me the the, the prime restaurant. I had to, this all worked out. So, but the restaurant business is all about making customers and making sure you take care of them so that they come back. Yes. So, oh same my thing God! Here. Wow, what a concept! What a concept! What a concept! It's completely foreign with most of my competition. Yeah, <laughs> go figure. They, they they just don't get it. Go figure. Uh, uh, people but, uh, come to me and said, "Yeah, I was just trying to do a deal with that guy, and he was really rude to me." Yeah. I'm never going back, and I'm going to tell my friends they sucked. So yeah, so I, I hear it a lot. Yeah, for sure. You know, I can be. Uh, you know, I'm not the most basically. Uh, amiable guy in the world in person okay. i understand that sure yeah i'm i'm six three you know i played football football yes uh you know i i love playing defense because i got to hit people right uh but uh yeah i'm not and then you know i have a, a really bad family history you know like I, i've had four brothers and sisters that have already passed away and i'm basically not a happy person in that respect Except when I'm with my wife. Right. And you know my wife. I do know your wife, and, Sharon, uh, yes. And Sharon's my angel, and she is a basically happy p person. She's very happy, yes. So, and I've worked very hard in our relationship to keep her that way. Right. So, uh, I, I need her around more and more to do uh, PR and be nice to people. That's <laughs> why she, she's at your booth. I just want to do the business. Well, it's I like, like here, you want to give me 600 for this? Yes. No. Yeah, no? <laughs> All right. All right, 575? I'll give you 575. Okay, okay. okay. deal. Yeah, yeah. cash yeah, or card. Right. Yes, right. Yeah, Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, yes. I'm all, all about the business at a show because, you know, uh, yeah, why is Anthony so grumpy? Anthony's grumpy because he's got to cover 30000 at New York Comic Con. <laughs> yes. I got to cover thirty thousand before yeah, I start I making can, money. I can, I can I can tell how well you're doing by your your uh, yeah. your, your demeanor. Yes, and I so. didn't I didn't I didn't relax uh, at this year's Comic Con until I did a couple of deals on yeah. Sunday. I know I remember. You know, and I came over. You look more way more relaxed. So that was yeah, good. it was Sunday was that I did. Uh, somebody came and and got a sixteen thousand uh, dollar a piece for me. Yeah, we did a deal. I wanted twenty, but hey. and then uh, somebody else made me an offer that I'm still trying to work out. You know, uh, so that. On another piece about that size, yep. uh, and that's still out. Uh, we haven't figure, finished that off yet. But no, I mean, it was by Sunday that I got to that uh, that financial buoyancy where I could relax a little bit. Yep. And then I was getting sick. Right. Uh, but you, you powered through it, man. Yeah, I, I had you to. I had to. Do? There's too For many the... people that rely on me. I mean, I when, know you the have, feeling, my friend. when you have 20 people that you support, it's like... It's no joke. Yeah, but you know we you do know, it for the business, my this friend. This is this is the business. The business and of I'm comics. Like, I had a guy. Uh, it's fun. It was kind of. It shows you like oh, you know he uh, did a deal on time payments. He owed me three thousand dollars, and he sent me a check early. And I'm like, oh, I'm glad I could get it in your hands earlier. I'm like, in my hands, that's already gone. Yeah, right. <laughs> I need that in my payroll account to cover payroll this yeah, week. Exactly. Yeah, very little goes in my hands. Hands. And no. right, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. so all right. So the business is good. You're you're happy with things are going. Um, for the most I, part? I'll be happy, uh, er, when uh, the economy turns around a little bit and uh, we experience a little more uh, growth and and uh, you know it's it's a shame what's going on in the Middle East. Oh, and sure. We're in a shooting shooting war again over there. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, everybody's about uh, not escalating and de-escalating, and, and and but it's like you know, it's it's tough out there. Yeah. Well, uh, we, we have just an hope that we, you know we have an escape, and you know, in the we books. don't get drawn into a bigger uh, regional conflict. Right. Yeah. So, and yeah, you know, I'm hoping. Yeah, when the county picks up, uh, we all we all win out, right? Yeah. Hopefully. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of the economy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back out to the con. We got another hour left, so, but um. Yeah, you got to sell an, another naked picture of yourself wearing well, a, a half little naked. slip. It's a speedo, but yeah, yeah, it's orange speedo. <laughs> hey man, talk about the business of comics. Yeah, that one I've does. I've done some. That, that one's that one's well. Yeah, I I yeah. You've been in in states of uh, undress. Uh, undress and uh, yeah. So what we do for content. So um, we're late. It is content. Let and, me uh, put these up here. Anthony's comic book art dot com. Also, dueling dealers of comic book art every Wednesday live on, at nine p.m. Eastern. Yep. And uh, follow at Anthony's Comic Book Art. 
And I'm actually doing a sports talk show with Pepper Johnson, a former Giant and uh, New England uh, uh, defensive coach, uh, on Tuesdays. Well, uh, you're and, uh, a content creating machine, yeah. my friend. So that's awesome. Well, that's that's the thing. I, you know, I, I became this uh, this brand of, or you know, this seller and and built this business to sell comics and art and and collectibles, but. There was a mo- there was a time you know at seventh grade comics stopped okay. for me as far as my background. Sure. And I'll be quick about this. And I started playing team sports, so I, I started playing football and basketball, and 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 I loved basketball. I played basketball every day. So when I grew to like six three, I was still I became very athletic, especially for football, and and uh, I was a, a really good basketball athlete, and I was actually recruited by Coach K at Duke, mm-hmm. and Steve Spurrier. Right. So I had official... Legends. Legends. Uh, official, yeah, they weren't legends yet because okay. I'm, I'm kind of old. I'm almost yeah. 60. Okay. So, yeah, this was 1982 when I was coming out, but I had scholarship offers to Duke basketball and, and Florida football. And, um, yeah, but uh, so I became a, a jock, and then uh, that ran its course, and I, I, I cracked a vertebrae in my neck in football, and that kind of ended me. And... Uh, and I, I just couldn't stay in school. I was a horrible student. And that's when I went into the restaurant business. And then gradually uh, I met Mike Carbonaro, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately. But he did get me involved in the business in the <laughs> yeah. early yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it grew that's from a, there. That's, for, that's all another podcast. So Yeah. yeah. With the, the, the creatures that we've had to deal with, the uh, horror shows. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, yeah, so my, my, my sports, uh, you know, I'm a sports guy. I am a sports guy. I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow with the, the Jets and Giants. Mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm a lifelong Giants fan, and my business is in the shadow of Giants Stadium, or MetLife, and, uh, and we're looking forward to that. So uh, that's just an aside as far as, like, my sports talk, because my dad was a sports broadcaster and a very famous one. Uh, so, and he was the first guy to ever pick games on TV. Now they have, you know, the, oh, sure. anybody, yeah, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's a, every, everyone makes predictions. Yeah. Yes. They're like, they do 20 people. There's a pre pregame show that's got seven people. <laughs> yeah. Then there's a pregame show that's right. got five or six people, and they're all picking. And they are they're having the guy who uh, mops the floors pick, yeah. and they're all like under five hundred. Right. But uh, well, yeah. I'm going to start doing picks on the show, but they're all going to be about what I would put my own money on. Uh, would make sense. And then you you either live what? or die by that. Yeah, you get customers, be nice to customers, try to give uh, good customer service, and only give picks that I would bet on. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. So. so that's the story of Anthony. And thank you so much for taking this time yeah, with me. Of course, uh, man. Mr. Ming, the, the merciless. Of course, man. Always yes. good to see you. So. Uh, it's a pleasure. You're a great host. You've really done well with this, and uh, I, I well, wish so your, you. your business. So. You know, anybody out there that needs to you some do advice this? about podcasting, yep, I'm here. come to the Shared yep. Universe. Yep, Shared Universe, right where, here right at where the we Bell are Works. now. Yep, for sure. So we'll see you at the cons, everybody, and buy original art. Support original art. Buy it because it's awesome. Uh, we'll see you soon, everybody.